I'm Stephen with Sideline Scout, and here today with me is uh, David Bodaya. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. So, in the last year, what purchase that you've made that's been a hundred dollars or less that's really impacted your life? Uh, on an eternal benefit, uh, nothing. Um, I, I'm thinking of my wife and I were thinking about purchasing a $350 cordless vacuum. And we were like, we don't know if it's that good. So we went to uh, Target and bought a cheap, cheap cordless vacuum. And it has been the best thing in our entire lives. <laughs> like, it works great. It gets all of our floors in a, in a second. And I think I'm dating myself because a vacuum cleaner under $100 is the best purchase I've made in the past year. That's... <laughs> Oh, I'm saying out loud, it's kind of sad. You're, you're definitely a family man yes, now. Holy we, cow. We, you, you, I wish it was like, ah, I bought this cool. No, it's a vacuum. It's a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. So, um, you know, growing up in Texas or, you know, being born there and, and living a part of your early childhood. And now, you know, up here, you, you live out, out, you know, out in the country uh, do you hunt, fish, camp? You have any of those no, kind of skills? Like I don't, I don't like camping. <laughs> like we have really close friends of ours who they always camp, and my wife and I are like, we have a bed in our house, air conditioned. Like we're fine. We don't need to camp. Um, I don't like hunting. Um, I, I'm like a poser countryman, like <laughs> outdoors countryman. But one of the things that we do love, um, we we live on a couple of acres, but um, my wife's grandparents live, they surround us. So they have about 55 acres surrounding us and there's a big creek. And um, we do like to take the ranger or the golf cart out and go by the creek or go through the woods. And um, my daughter loves getting in the dirt. And so I love that. And we get dirty when we go out and take hikes and she actually loves fishing and so as a love for her i help her fish and it's not like i don't know how to do it i just do you bait the hook i do yeah i did she can't take the fish off so i'm <laughs> taking the fish off for her and it's like a game but um it's not something i love but i do it sure. and i know how to do it uh who's your sports hero so I actually got to meet my sports here in uh, Rio. Um, I'm a big Colts fan, and Tony Dungy was the head coach for I don't know how many years, but I've always looked up to him, just how he carried himself, um, his character, his perspective towards the game, and then also how he, he treated the, the players, how he coached the players. And I remember I was in some post-interview after um, – winning the bronze medal and one of the things that NBC did to surprise me was uh, find Tony Dungy because he was at the Olympic Games and I was getting ready for this in the dressing room and Tony Dungy came in and I was like this was almost the this was the first guy I was starstruck by like I've, I've walked to opening ceremonies next to Kobe Bryant I've met President Bush and Obama and I think that was cool but I met Tony Dungy and I was like what do I say uh, I'm Bill. Nope. I'm David, sorry about that. Um, but he he's a guy that I look up to, and um, so it was pretty cool to meet him. So did he live up to your expectation? Oh, beyond it. So I got to meet him and his son, and they're exactly what you see on TV, just class act men, and um, they, they it's not a face that they put on. They're the real deal. One of the things that uh, always – I just – cringe a lot of times uh when i'm now whenever i hear parents or or people that maybe aren't as versed in a sport and giving uh, uh bad advice or bad recommendations to to young athletes uh -huh. do you see that in the sport of diving yes. and what what what's one of what's one of those things that you you hear that parent or somebody uh say or shout to their to their kid that you're like, oh gosh, don't say that. I mean, I think the <laughs> the biggest thing that I hear pa parents say to their kids that are training or in competition is they're trying to coach them, um, but they put so much pressure on them. And so they feel that pressure. And then that's when you go back to like, 
I didn't do well and I let my mom down or I let my dad or family or whoever it is, I let them down. And so putting that kind of pressure, but also it, the parents can come in and um, they can kind of like turn off their kids' mental game. So I remember there was a parent who said to their their uh, son in a comp- before the competition, well, David has a lot of experience and so he's been in this before. He knows exactly what to do. And I heard something like that, and I was like, why would you ever tell your kids something like that? Now they're going to go in just scared out of their mind and already <laughs> sold themselves to third place instead of first or second. And like that kind of stuff, the pressure on your kids um, makes me cringe. And I can see in gymnastics, um, my four-year-old daughter's in gymnastics, and the very first one I was like sitting there like, oh. but I saw myself doing it, and I don't like it so now I'm just like yeah there you go that was terrible (laughs) or hey that's actually pretty good and so I let the coach coach them and the parent is there to support and love them and um, I think that's good in the sport to do that balance yeah that that's great that's great advice I mean because Parents need to be parents, and the coaches yes. be the coaches, yes. and yeah. uh, that's the best thing that you can do for your kid. Yes, absolutely. So, um, have you ever done? Have you ever done any cliff diving? Or you know, that's. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know that you've said that the 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 ten meter was a. You know, you you had some uh, challenges there. Uh, yeah. di- you know, even getting getting the ability to, to get up there and dive off that platform. And, mm-hmm. you know, what about those guys that do the cliff diving and, and, you know, that's like crazy high. Yeah. What's funny is a lot of the guys that are doing the cliff diving, whether it's the Red Bull cliff diving or the, the FINA high diving, um, they're teammates of mine. So I dove college diving at Purdue with them and I see them up there and I'm like, like how in the world? Cause they're, they're diving from 27 meters. That's 90 feet like a 13 story building. And actually um, I did commentary for those Red Bull events. And some of the time I have to go up there and kind of open up the show up on the 10 meter or the 27 meter platform. And I just remember like shaking, like I was supposed to go towards the end, the wind is blowing and I have no idea how they do it. Um, The highest I've ever jumped off of was uh, 70 feet. And I came I'm an experienced diver, and the one no-no you do jumping off a 10 meter is you keep your arms in. You don't have them out. Well, 27 meter or the 70 feet, I came and I landed like this, and I, my arms were black and blue from that 70 foot drop. Um, but I'm good on the springboard. That's three meters <laughs> high. Those those guys are just they're a different animal. The, the event that I actually did was um, in Pagnano Amari, so it was somewhere in Italy, and it's off of someone's terrace. So, like, off their building into the ocean, and the wind is blowing, like, 30, 40 miles an hour. They're that 27 meters in the air, and so they're blowing back and forth, and, like, it makes me nauseous just thinking about it. But David will return in the last episode on May 15th.